So this next project is going to include a barn board, which I've worked with uh, once before. Used it as a backer behind the TV. But this time, going to be cladding out the back side of our uh, new peninsula. That way, kind of ties this room to that room. I'm going to try something new, which is uh, giving you sort of an idea of how difficult the job is going to be based on a beer rating in that uh, how many beers it would take to complete said job. Now, something as small as this, I'm going to call it mm, a two or three beer job. That includes uh, cleaning the barn board and installing it. Now, barn board, though, can kind of go anywhere from a two beer job all the way up to an entire keg, depending on how much you are doing. And uh, the cleaning and the prep work of it is fairly intensive. Nothing you can't handle, it's just time consuming, much like some sort of sanding and stuff which you will end up doing. So we'll call this a, a two or three beer job. All right, so this time I'm gonna show you how I clean up barn board for use inside the house because it came out of a barn, so it's covered in crap and spiders and stuff. So this is the process I go through to clean it up. First, get yourself some gloves, doesn't matter what time of year it is. Currently it's winter, so I'd be wearing gloves anyways, but get yourself some gloves because these cause some pretty gnarly splinters if uh, you catch one. It's not designed to be handled by these. It's supposed to go up on the wall of the barn and be done. Get yourself a hammer. Now, it doesn't have to be a big framing hammer, obviously, but you can, you can still do the same job with a little girly 16-inch hammer. And a uh, nail punch. Now, this is because a lot of barn board will still have nails all through it, and you can pull most of them out with this, or you can punch a bunch of them through with this, especially because they will break off when you're trying to pull them out. So if you don't want nails left in it, then you can punch them through from one of the sides with one of these guys. Next, you need a wire brush. This is actually starting to clean, so you'll end up using it. Just like that. Now this is like a, a welding wire brush you get from Canadian Tire or whatever. It's all you need. Just something with some nice coarse bristles. Loosens up all the stuff on here. Sanding block that you're not going to care about. You can see I've already used this side on it a little bit because it kind of cleans up the last little bit of stuff that this moved. Um, you can use just regular sandpaper, obviously. Uh, wrap it around a block. Make your life a little bit easier there. And then the last step is this attachment on a shop vac. You go over it and uh, I find the, the bristles actually help to pick up a lot of the stuff that's left on there. Now also before you do any barn board, don't think you're just gonna go pick up barn board and slap it up somewhere in the house. I would recommend getting it in the nice months because then you can pressure wash it outside and let it dry. The big thing with that is that you're gonna pressure wash it and get all the gunk and stuff off and spider's nest, but you're also going to fully saturate the boards. These have been outside for a long time. They've been weathered, but they also, they soak up water. It's, that's what wood, wood does. So if you let them soak up all that water, give them a nice dry place to, to dry out. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be warm. I put mine up in the rafters there in the attic. My attic's not insulated in the garage. So it dries out over a course of a couple of months, plan ahead, and then uh, once it comes time to actually start using it, it's all dry, and it's not gonna change shape on you anymore. So those are pretty much the basics of how I clean and get uh, the barn board ready to go. The next big thing will be once it's all clean, you don't really have any straight edges to work off. If you have a pretty straight edge, but it's not the greatest, you can't get an accurate measurement off of that. So that's where a planer comes into play. And yes, my garage is disgusting. But you can plane down one side of it and then you have a perfectly straight side to measure off of and then run through the table saw. Now the other way to do it is just to go through the table saw cutting roughly a quarter inch off and it'll kind of straighten it out but it's a lot harder to do it that way. Um, my recommendation, definitely get yourself a, uh, a joiner and... You can go down the one side, which once I get to that point, I will, uh, I'll show you how I'm going through that because that'll be when I take all this crap from previous projects 
and, and sports off of it. All right, so now I'm going to uh, prep the boards to install them here in the uh, in the kitchen. The the thing with the barn boards though is most of the times they're not 100% straight along the edge. The boards I'm working with today actually are pretty straight, but I still want to make sure I got nice tight joints. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually use a joiner. So as I showed you before, that's this guy. Uh, clear it off now with uh, with all my stuff off of it. Basically what it is, is you got the fence here, you're gonna put your board alongside there and you wanna choose your, uh, your sort of flattest side to go along there. Otherwise, as it's going across, like if you've got a big bow to the piece of wood, it's going to reflect that uh, along the edge. So you slide it through, this kinda gets out of the way as you go and uh, there's spinning blades down there that uh, straighten out the edge for you. Also, if you would like a shorter finger, these blades are, are well, they'll do a real good job of that. So make sure you keep your hands far and away. If you're putting something through on its flat, it's actually not a bad idea to have um, a little push on the top because it can kick out from you. And if it kicks out at the wrong time, your hand's going in there and uh, they're going to call you stumpy. Knuckles. That's what they're going to call you. All right, since I'm starting at the bottom of the uh, counter, uh, I want kind of a wider board because there is a few inch gap on the bottom. So I need a wider board to make sure I catch something and can actually nail it together. So as I said, they're pretty actually straight along either side. I just want to kind of clean them up a little bit. So to figure out which side's gonna go against that fence, take a look at her this way and you can actually see, maybe, there's a little bit of a cup on the inside so the the left side there it uh, bows a little bit towards the other side so I'm actually going to put this side against the fence because that means that this and this should theoretically be roughly flush there's a little bit of a dip here in the middle but this and this are the same so I run this along the fence and we uh, we should be pretty good Now it's very important to make sure all your cracks out of the way, which currently mine is not. The garage is never big enough. There, wasn't that thrilling watching me move stuff? <laughs> this one before I wanted to kind of test things so now I need to raise the blade up because you didn't hear it cutting much off so I'm gonna raise the blade up a little bit that way it's gonna cut a little bit more <laughs> a lot more. Still not all the way though, so I'm actually going to run it through another time. Now that you've got a good uh, clean edge here, after running through the joiner, um, I'm going to take off the other edge, and rather than continually running it through the joiner, I'm going to run it through the table saw once, because now I know I have a straight edge on that one side, I can put that against the fence, and cut off like an eighth or like a blade width, whatever. Um, sometimes with the chunkier barn board, things like this, you've got a whole hunk of it out and then it kicks back in. Well, you need to make the board that wide because that's where all the meat is. So something like that, you can get yourself a nice flat edge over here 
and then set your table saw to this distance and you can zip off all of this crap and uh, have yourself a nice square on either side board. Another thing with the table saw is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it is nice and square. This is obviously a bit of a jerry rig kind of a deal. Um, a lot of the newer table saws have the fence and you just kind of roll it along and it slides along this measuring tape here, which when it's brand new, this scale, probably pretty accurate. After you use it a few times, drop it, throw things on it, hit it, whatever, it gets a little wonky. So you can measure your distance, you can lay the board on, whatever you want to do to set your distance. And then if you want to check that it's square, get yourself an actual square and you can lay it along there. And this metal over here is going to be square. So lay it along that edge and up along this edge. And as long as you don't have any gaps, you're good to go.